The views expressed by our guests in the following video are solely the opinions of our guests and do not necessarily reflect the views and or opinions of the Ola7 podcast show. Viewer discretion is advised. to the genius kids this is the show where we sit down and meet young minds who are shaping the future i am your host aisha nyanzunda and today i am delighted to be sitting down with giselle chidawanyika she's not only excelling in one discipline but she's a fashion designer she's an aspiring journalist she's in the robotics club and she's also a public speaker hello giselle and welcome to the show thank you for having me today in your exciting show I'm so glad to have you. Okay, Giselle, so to start off, please tell us a bit about yourself, your background, your age, and your family. So I'm 13 years. Uh, I was born on the 8th of March, 2011, on a Tuesday night. Tuesday night, that's so specific. I don't think a lot of people know, <laughs> know that kind of information. Okay, so what school do you go to? I am currently doing my studies at Missy Christian College. And uh, my favorite subjects are math, English, and combined science. You know what? I always get this a lot. A lot of people just tell me their favorite subject is math, but I think math was my worst. Why do you like math? Uh, the complications are fun. Do you like complications? Yes. I think I like the easy life. <laughs> okay, so do you have any friends, and what do you guys do during your spare time? Uh, my best friend at Missy Christian College is Rungu Zaima Fofo. And during our spare time, we read and write our own novels. Uh, we also write poems and do some singing as well. Oh, so you write your own novels and your own music and your own poems. Yes. When did you start writing? Uh, this year at Missy Christian College. And what inspired you to start writing? Uh, when I first arrived at Missy Christian College, there was a lot of competition with different classes. So I started my own competition, which involved writing novels and my own music as well as poetry. Wow, interesting and very inspiring. So can you tell me about the story or poem you're currently working on? So I have a story. It's called um, Lockdown. It's about a girl who is living with her mother. She is the cause of the death of her brother and her father. But to her, it was just a game because she was too young. But as she grew up, she notices that it was her fault and it eats her from inside. But she actually finds a way of getting by it. It passes by through making friends, though she was locked inside the home by her mother because she had become overprotective. Wow, I can't wait to read that one. So since you're an author, that also means you also do a lot of reading yourself. Yes, Who's yes. your favorite author and how have they inspired you in your writing? Oh, my favorite writers are Sarah J. Harris and uh, Kay Rizzo. They write motivating stories that um that give me inspiration whenever I feel down whilst writing my own stories. All right, interesting. So, what kind of genre do you write, uh, and why? I am into thrillers and action stories as well as love stories. Just the combination of all those uh, brings out a new genre of my own. All right, and you write your own music. What? How do you come up with ideas for your own music and even your poems? Because I, I think like writing music and poems is more or less the same, right? So how do you come up with these ideas? So as for music, I mix different kinds of songs from different people, integrating my own song. And poetry, If you, it's actually simple. If you just give me a topic, uh, I can write. Interesting. Anything. Anything. So I could tell you to write a song about me <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay and uh since you're also into music i guess maybe do do you play an instrument i played the marimba you played the marimba uh my grandmother taught me how to play the marimba before uh before she died oh man so rest in peace so right now at missy christian college we are learning how to play the piano i myself see the marimba as the as a traditional version of the piano that's how I got interested 
of the piano. Interesting. So what's your favorite song to play on the mbira? Uh, it's called Mananga Kutapira. Mananga Kutapira. And I know Tapira Mananga. Yeah. <laughs> so are there any messages or themes that you like to ex explore in your work? So in my poems, I like to motivate people. Uh, I have a lot of friends who are sometimes um, sitting alone. So I write poems on them to make them feel that they are motivated, they are not alone uh -huh. in the world. Okay, good for you. So can you tell us about your writing process? How do you go about it? Uh, how do you know when a song or a poem or a story is, is now perfection? Do you take long writing? Just tell us, take us through your writing process. So I don't actually have uh, a routine, but uh, I just wait for the right moment. When the light switch is on, I just start writing. And when it's off, I stop and wait until next time. <laughs> Genius, there's no switch, hey? Yeah. All right. So since you are a writer and you write music, do you also sing? Uh, no, I don't sing. I let my friends at Miss Efficient College do the singing. All I right. So she's sharing her genius, guys. <laughs> okay, and what do you hope to achieve with your novels and your music? I do hope that by the age of 30, I would have been able to write mostly 10 of my novels and already published them. You want to publish 10 novels? Yes. By the age of 30? Yes. And you're 13 now. Yes. So that means like every year, from now on, every year, you have to publish a book. Yes. Okay. All right. And have you ever shared your work, your books, your novels, your poems with your family? I have shared my poems with my father, but the only response I get for him is that be sure that you focus on your schoolwork. I'm serious about your schoolwork. But at school, I've seen that the principal and the director are supporting me in the journalism club. All right, so how is the principal and the director supporting you? Uh, they provide materials for the journalism club, like books, pens, pencils, for us to use during our clubs okay. every Friday. And I'm told you're also the best public speaker at your school. Is that true? Yes, I am. You're the best? Yes. Okay, and what inspired you to join public speaking? Why public speaking? Because, you know, most people are afraid to speak in public, but then you are the best. So tell us. Uh... It was because of the journalism club. Okay. It was a Friday and I was just loitering around the school when I was supposed to be at a club. And then my teacher, Idema Wite, she, she threatened me with the shambok. <laughs> so I just rushed into journalism and then my teacher just selected me for a public speaking event. All right. So I used to do public speaking as well and we used to do these things called impromptu speeches. Would you like to give us one? Or oh, I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> And uh, not today. Not today. Okay, cool. So how do you prepare for a speech or presentation? Uh, usually when I'm at home, I speak, speak to myself in the mirror or I dress a chair with my clothes and pretend that the chair is my audience. I speak to myself in the mirror too. <laughs> before I come on the show, I'm speaking to myself on the mirror. So how do you handle the pressure just before you go on stage to speak publicly? How do you deal with your nerves? Uh, when I'm on stage, before I dive into my main agenda, I tell jokes so that the audience may laugh whilst I'm surfing my mind for uh, the topic I'm supposed to do. All right. If you are just joining us, I am talking to the young and talented Giselle Chidawanyika. She is excelling in four different disciplines. She's a public speaker. She's an aspiring journalist. She's a fashion designer. And she's also, a, I forgot the other one. She's also in the robotics club and we were just sitting down and getting to meet her and knowing more from her. So how, um, what advice would you give to someone who is just starting in public speaking? I'd love the person to be natural. They should focus on creating their own themes, their own topics to present. So the advice is be natural. Yes. So how do you deal with um, challenges? when you're public speaking. I mean, sometimes, like, I just put you on the spot there and you come, come up with something in your mind immediately. How do you deal with challenges in public speaking? So, during my presentations, I notice that I stammer a lot. So I make sure that at the end of my presentation, I mention the word stammer in my signature name. Like, I'll go, like, stammering G, signing out, and then <laughs> the audience would link the stammering in the name. Ah, nice. Stammering G in the house. Yes. <laughs> okay, so 
to someone who's just starting out, what would you say is the most important skill for a public speaker to have? A public speaker should be confident and uh, they should also be able to use gestures to link the audience to what you're saying. Mm, all right. And you're also into fashion designing. How did you get started in fashion? So both of my grandmothers are into fashion designing. I used to observe what they do. Um, I like the part when my grandmother used to call me, Gigi on this station of Azone is easy. I have <laughs> orders to make right now. And then I just started following what she did. Okay, so I, 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 then I think I might know the answer to the next question. Who's your favorite fashion designer or influencer? Oh, my grandmother. I, I saw that coming. <laughs> okay, so can you, des can you describe the design process? Like, how do you do it? How do you come up with a design until you have a beautiful dress at the end? Uh, so I derive my designs from different objects. Like I can look at the wall, the pattern of the wall, and design maybe a sketch from how the, the wall is lined. Mm. Yes. Okay, interesting. And how? what type of materials do you normally work with? I like to work with silk because I feel it's expensive and it um, instills a sign of authority and power in a person when you wear it. Oh, so silk is authority and power. Yes. I'm going to wear more silk. You I've should. learned. I've learned something new today. And have you created any pieces that you're proud of? Uh, for someone who's still at the drawing stage of designing, I am particularly proud of myself because of what I'm doing. Right. Good. Good. And how do you keep up with current fashion trends? I mean, fashion changes every day. How do you keep up with that? So I've noticed that um, the current fashion trends are just a playback of the olden day fashion but they're just modifying the clothes into something that the early children would like. So I'm that kind of a person who wears mom's clothes and shoes and look in the mirror and try to see the olden clothes in a modified way, the way uh, an ama 2K child would love the clothes. Ah, interesting. And what's your favorite fashion project or collection? Uh, so currently I'm working on a project I call Rainbow Fusion. It's a collection made up of different kinds of clothes in different kinds of colors, but I am deriving them from the olden days. Just as people are deriving um, the pants that are tied uh, up front and um, loose at the bottom, they call them gypsies. Okay. Uh, they're just from the past. I've heard about gypsies. Yes, <laughs> or even the pillars. They're just from the past, but people are actually noticing them now. Right. And you're also an aspiring journalist. You're a TV presenter at school. Tell me about being a TV presenter at school. So it started at Missy Christian College's Journalism Club. Uh, the head teacher, Mr. Dingara of the Journalism Club, just selected me to do a presentation and then I just, it just flowed. Wow. So it's just natural like that. Yes. What do you enjoy most about being in front of the camera? Uh, because I'm shy, I couldn't say that I enjoy being on camera, but... Uh, a journalist instinct in me tells me that being on camera is what I'm supposed to do and it's who I'm going to be in the next years to come. Okay, nice, nice. So can you tell or share with me a memorable experience that you have had as a presenter? So my first presentation at Missy Christian College was um, on the Missy Christian College's prize giving day. Um, so I just looked at the director's side and then I saw he was smiling. Then I knew I, I was just doing well. Okay. And who do you look up to in the broadcasting industry? Uh, it's the one and only DJ Ola. Ah, okay. All right. Um, okay. I like the way he goes for big people in the industry. And I like the way he's passionate about other people's dreams. So I, 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 I think you enjoy our shows, the On The Sport. Yes. Our I trending story. Which one is your favorite? Trending or On The Sport? Trending. You like trending stories with Yaya Good Vibes? Yes. Okay. And um, you aspire to become an advocate for the girl child. Are there any specific issues facing the girl child today that you're like, this is what I want to tackle? Okay. At some point, I lived in Bari. And right now, I'm currently living in Egypt in Ifield. Mm -hmm. Every December, there is a rise in cases of early pregnancies and child marriages. Those kind of cases give me the passion to tackle on um, uh, women and child abuse as a journalist. All right. Interesting. And how do you think young people like yourself can make a difference in their communities? Okay. I think that uh, school selection is important. 
for the child and the parents. Just as my parents chose Missy Christian College as the best school in Highland District. I am actually noticing that it is like the way they respect their uniform. It is a college that believes that their uniform is their pride. The thousand number of fleets on my skirt that I'm wearing today uh, represent a thousand rules and regulations to be followed by a student at Missy Christian College. Wow, I never thought of it like that. The the pleats on the skirt representing rules and regulations. I never thought, of, you're so brilliant, man. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so can you share with me maybe a story about one person, one woman or a girl that really inspires you? Um, my, my late grandmother inspired me the most. Mm -hmm. uh, she was a prayer warrior and... Uh, she was multi-talented. She, she could do cooking for people at church. She could sing in the church choir. And she could sew garments for the people in the church. Um, uh, though she was old, she was able to maintain health on her own, able to fight uh, diseases such as cancer and asthma on her own, being able to live till 72 years. Well, you just heard it from Giselle Chinawanyika. She is a 13-year-old who's making a difference in the community already at the age of 13. And she's here on the Genius Kids and we're getting to know her better. So as an aspiring journalist, what kind of stories do you tell? I think it's already obvious that I'd like to focus on stories about the girl child and how society is treating the girl child. All right. And who are your favorite journalists? As I once said before, it's DJ Oil. He knows how to dress people in, in his interviews and he knows how to ask questions in people. Mm -hmm. And how do you think journalism can help raise awareness about girls' issues? I hope that as a journalist, I'll be able to inspire the girl child, uh, informing them about what's happening in the society and what they should do to be noticed. Mm -hmm. So how do you stay informed about current events and the latest news? So I source my information on social media mainly, or I read newspapers or listen to radio programs. Mm -hmm. So with all this talent that you have, all this intelligence, all this wisdom that you have been sharing with you, with me, what, what, what are your hopes for the future? I know you want to publish 10 books by the age of 30, but... What does the future of Giselle look like? Uh, I hope to be a journalist who focuses on social science, besides having talent in many other areas. All right. And we didn't talk about this one, but maybe you can share with me a bit about that. The robotics thing. What's going on with the robotics thing? So um, the robotics club at Missy Christian College mm -hmm. are deals on using science in sustainable resource management. So I built a Christmas tree from cardboard, uh, used lights and uh, batteries. You can make a Christmas tree on your own from $3, then going to a shop in town and buying a Christmas tree for $15. It will be a way of saving money, and it's actually fun to, to make your own Christmas tree yeah. other than buying a super expensive one. Yeah, so inspiring. All right, guys, that was it from our young genius, Giselle Chidawanyika. She is a 13-year-old who's an aspiring journalist. She's a public speaker. She's a fashion designer. And she's also in the robotics club. She's been sharing with me her wisdom and intelligence in this exciting episode. Thank you so much for coming to the show, Giselle. You're welcome. And that's it from me, your host, Aisha Nyanzunda. Catch me again, same time, next week for those insightful discussions with these young minds who are shaping the future.
the little things that make us giants in our industry. We put in that extra mile of service so your car can go that extra mile of performance. Our aim is to make our stopovers feel like home. Giant Petroleum. Limitless Energy.